I'm Chance Dorland, and this is In Depth, an interview program from ExpressNews.com with in-depth reporting and other resources for stories affecting San Antonio and Bear County. Special guest today, I'm joined now by San Antonio Express News Courts and Crime Reporter Elizabeth Zavala. Liz, you and I are usually on the Docket podcast every week, a similar schedule to the In Depth podcast, one episode every week. Um, on the docket, we talk about you know court and crime cases, and we're having you on in depth this week as well because we have a special case. This is really a treat. Um, you know the basis for for how this story um, you know now needs to be told. Not 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 the greatest story to have to tell someone, but there does seem to be a very happy ending where children are now being taken care of and they're in a very loving home. So we've talked about this case before on the docket. Remind me some of the details about what we're discussing today. Yes, Chance. And yes, I'm very, very happy to be discussing this story. Uh, This story is about two children who were tied up with chains and leashes and left outside in a backyard in the spring in San Antonio in 2016. The crux of the whole thing was that um, they had been left by their mother in the care of a couple who had their own children. And the mother left, but in the course of her being gone for several months, the uh, people that she left in charge of her children, uh, began abusing them. So, uh, and this was a horrific case. We, we have discussed it on the docket before where, um, these children were the young man, four years old, his little sister, three, and they were bound so tightly that the little girl could not move. She could neither sit nor stand. And then her brother, Uh, not very far away from where she had been held, uh, was surrounded by his own feces because he really, he was tied up so tight, he had really no place to go. So when um, authorities found these two children uh, based on a phone call that was made from a neighbor who had heard a child crying for several hours, uh, law enforcement officers, in this case, Bear County Sheriff's deputies actually wept when they saw these children because they were in such bad shape uh, in these horrific, abusive uh, conditions. And, uh, you know, and eventually they became desperately in need of a home because of, um, you know, the severing of the parental rights from the mother who left them there in the care of another couple. We'll talk about that home, Um, and then this is an update uh, of stories that we've discussed before that you've written about before, Um, checking in with um, these two, seeing how they're doing in their new home, you know, all indications, thriving, a loving family, a really, really good story. Um, But let's just focus a little bit more on, on the past. Three people went to prison in this case. Who were they, and what was the sentencing for each one of them? Yes, well, the mother of the children is a woman by the name of Cheryl Reed. She actually was the last person who uh, was sentenced in this case. But it all started with her chance because she knew a woman by the name of Portia Phillips, who was married or who actually was the common law wife of a man by the name of DeAndre Dorch. Now, these two. Uh, people lived in far northeast Bear County, and they were the primary caretakers of Cheryl Reed's children. So Portia Phillips pleaded guilty in October of 2017 to two counts of injury to a child and was sentenced to 50 years in prison. Uh, this was part of a plea agreement that she had um, reached, uh, that her attorney reached with Bear County uh, Assistant District Attorneys in this particular case. So she was sentenced to 50 years in prison. Now, in May of this year, a Bear County jury found DeAndre Dorch guilty of four counts 
of injury to a child by omission. And he was sentenced to four 65-year prison terms that are going to be served at the same time. So uh, in just, you know, to remind folks who listen about this, injury to a child by omission in this case was that the jury decided that DeAndre Dortch was guilty because the abuse was happening and he didn't do anything about it. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, Elizabeth. I think some of his defense was um, the idea that he was working so much and may have not known. Exactly. He and his uh, his uh, defense attorney presented it that way to the jury that he and Portia Phillips had six children between the two of them. That was a combination of yours, mine, and ours. And he was working, and I believe she was looking for work. And then they had these other two children that belonged to Cheryl Reed. And all three people knew each other from California. So at some point, Cheryl Reed contacted her friend Portia and said, can you watch my kids? And she came and dropped them off. So she also entered into a plea agreement with Bear County prosecutors. And on July 2nd of this year, Cheryl Reed pleaded guilty to two counts of abandonment of a child without the intent to return. And she was sentenced to 10 years in prison. And uh, that she was the last person to uh, get sentenced in this case. And on that particular day was when I met the new mother of the children. That uh, will take us to where the updates are specifically with this story. Very positive uh, updates that very, very happy to share with with such a horrid history um, with this case that you've just described. So tell me about the new family. And uh, there's an interesting twist uh, in this part of the story. Yes, um, Chance, this was this was a treat to actually do. I, I was honored to spend about a good three hours with LaKenya Shaw, who is the adoptive mother of sibling Josiah, who is now seven years old, and his sister, Naomi, who is now five. And uh, LaKenya told a very, very interesting story. She had there with her at the house that day the uh, foster mother who had actually taken the children just within days after they had been discovered in those horrific abusive conditions in uh, Northeast Bear County. So uh, Teresa ne- Neely is, was the foster mother. And she told the story of when she saw LaKenya Shaw begin to sing at the Northeast Side Church, where actually both women attend and never knew each other, she said that when she heard LaKenya sing, that she knew that there was a voice inside of her head that told her that LaKenya Shaw, who had been a stranger, was destined to be the mother of those two children who had been rescued in these abusive conditions. So um, Teresa said, when LaKenya stood to lead a song, she became so caught up in the hymn that that she was singing or or leading in their church that, that she says that in her mind, she literally heard God say, those are the parents that I have chosen for those children. So from then on, Neely said the process unfolded pretty neatly. She became, you know, for her, it became a quest to be able to find LaKenya Shaw and her husband, Alan, who uh, are members of this particular church. And once she got the phone number, uh, Teresa Neely was able to talk to the Shaws. And in my discussions with uh, LaKenya Shaw, she said, this Getting the to, to know Teresa Neely uh, and to meet the children 
for her was an answered prayer because Lakenya and Alan had been married for 17 years and they had wanted to have children. And right before they met the children, Lakenya had suffered a miscarriage. So Lakenya said that, that she and her husband had been praying and desiring children for a very long time. So when all four of, of these folks met each other, the two couples bonded and basically introduced the children to the people who are now their parents. So that's kind of the parental side of things for the children after they've moved on past this event. How are they fitting into to the new home? Were you able to speak to them specifically? Yes, and boy, what a joy that was. Um, this home, Chance, is very, very full of laughter. Uh, both of the children are, are really, really full of life. Um, I was greeted at the door by Josiah Shaw, who I said is, he was four when authorities found him chained to the ground. He's now seven years old and he's getting really tall and he is very talkative. He greeted me at the door with a hug and asked me to come in and he went and he got his mother and his sister and, and she explained to them that this is the lady that I was telling you about that is going to come talk to you talk to us today. So they were very inquisitive. Um, pretty much uh, by the end of the interview, uh, I was I was very tickled because Naomi, uh, who's five, five years old now, she was three when she was tied to the garage door and couldn't move. Uh, she began to copy me. She came up to me with a, a piece of paper and asked me to spell my name, almost like she was interviewing me as I had been interviewing her mother and um, Teresa Neely, whom she called her, her nanny. So, uh, you know, it, it was a very, very um, normal situation. And, and I'll say that because of where these two children came from. Uh, you know, they were so young back then. I, I remember writing stories that um, the ad litem who had been working with Teresa Neely at the time told me that these children were in such bad shape when they were found by authorities that um, they, had, you know, they would do things like they would go up to a couch and they would, they would rest their heads sideways on a couch and that's how they would sleep because neither of these children had ever slept in a bed. And when they saw food, they had the most ravenous um, of appetites because, you know, one could assume that they were not being, they were not being fed adequately as a four-year-old or a three-year-old should be. And it was also uh, confirmed because Medically speaking, um, they they were they were further behind than they needed to be, you know, as far as like their height and their weight, and you know certain things that that you know, um, for instance, that Josiah was was uh, was still in diapers, and he was he was four years old, so there were certain things that that they had to 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 learn or in other cases to relearn, you know, while they were in their foster home and now that they are in their forever home. Elizabeth, do they know the details of of what happened to them? Uh, How much do they remember? How much are they aware of? You know, that's really interesting. Um, I I didn't quite know how to, how to approach that, but uh, LaKenya Shaw and, and Teresa Neely are both very, very, lovely people and and they're they are very very strong women of faith as well and one of the things that that Lakenya said that that really touched me was she said you know we want for them to know where they came from she says it's very important 
for me that if they have something going on inside them, that they need to have a way to get that out. She said at the beginning that Josiah uh, had trouble sleeping and uh, would, you you know, uh, nightmares at times. uh, And then he would at times have discussions with people about what happened to him. He would talk about the backyard or uh, certain situations that occurred. And LaKenya said, you know, these are inappropriate conversations, you know, for children to be having with, with, with just anybody. So she and her husband, she said, decided that, that whenever something comes up from before, and they want to talk about about particular things that happened to them, or if they want to talk to what who La Kenya refers to as their tummy mommy, they do that, and they you know make sure that 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 they can talk to the children about it because she said they get really mixed up in their heads about the memories sometimes. So she said, we want for them to be able to differentiate between, you know, what really happened and, you know, where they are now. So she said, you know, the, the best way to, to keep them from getting mixed up is to talk to them about it. And she says, this is, you know, it, it applies to both children, but mostly it was for Josiah because he was older and he was more verbal. Now she describes Naomi as the the strong but silent type. And she said, just because she doesn't talk about it doesn't mean that she's not thinking about it or that it's floating around in her head. So so I get the, the sense from talking to LaKenya that she and her husband have a very open um, household with, with their children and they have allow them, you know, to discuss things so that it doesn't continue to fester inside them. And then uh, finally wrapping up here, Elizabeth, I hear that Josiah and Naomi may not be the only children in the house. Yes, Chance, this was, you know, a happy ending on top of a happy ending. When Cheryl Reed was awaiting trial in the Bear County Jail, she had another child. She had a boy, and LaKenya and Alan Shaw adopted him. His name is Matthew, and he is now two. So Josiah and Naomi and Matthew are together. They are not, this isn't one of those situations where you have three siblings and they've gone to three different houses, you know, for their forever homes. They are actually siblings and they are living in the same house with the same people so i mean i could not have crafted a better happy ending you know for um for such a tragic story that occurred and um you know that doesn't happen every day it's certainly not on the docket And thank you to San Antonio Express News Courts and Crime Reporter Elizabeth Zavala for joining me for today's episode of the In-Depth Podcast, an interview program from ExpressNews.com. For the San Antonio Express News, I'm Chance Dorland.